3,000 years ago, a nine-year-old boy was crowned king of Egypt, an empire which was one of the most powerful in the ancient world. He would become a relatively unimportant pharaoh, involved more with the passions of life than the details of state. Yet in death, Tutankhamun would play a role in history far more significant than anyone could have imagined. Few places in the world are as forsaken and unchanging as the Sahara Desert. People's lives are simple, uncomplicated by modern measures of time and mortality. The peasants mark the passing of their lifespans by the annual rotation of pasture lands and by the seasonal tilling, planting and harvesting of their meager crops. For most, the present and future exist in the shadow of the past. Symbolic of ancient Egyptian civilization are the enigmatic pyramids which dot the desert landscape. Giant monoliths, they are silent tributes to the genius of a bygone civilization. Many are now falling into ruin, but their crumbling walls reveal little of the purposes for their original existence. Most scholars are convinced that they were constructed as giant tombs for dead pharaohs. It is also documented that they became easy prey for grave robbers who either found or constructed their own passages within the mammoth walls so that they could strip the chambers of their precious artifacts. Realizing that the pyramids were being desecrated, the high Egyptian priests began diligently searching for a location where their royal tombs would go unnoticed and undisturbed. Across the Nile and 400 miles south of modern-day Cairo, the priests found what they had been looking for, a valley with imposing cliffs, an area that because it could conceal countless tombs would later become known as the Valley of the Kings. It was here that the modern quest would begin for the tomb of Tutankhamun. Just after the turn of the century, Egypt remained the keystone of the proud yet slowly diminishing British Empire. Egypt's position straddling the Suez was still all important to English military strategists. Yet for many Britons, the sprawling Sahara Desert that dominated the country represented either a warm, dry vacation spot or a land rich in archaeological treasure. The Rosetta Stone, discovered by Napoleon in 1799 and deciphered some 20 years later, finally provided the key to solving the riddle of the hieroglyphs. Written in Greek, Coptic, and in hieroglyphics, scholars were finally able to understand the tiny symbols. From pictographs and hieroglyphs unearthed during later digs in Egypt, part of the story of Tut would emerge. In search of cameras would, from these facts, recreate the days of King Tut. The boy had become crowned pharaoh in approximately 1500 BC. Information about his reign remained sketchy. All that was known was that the priestly court advisors probably extended a great deal of control over the young boy called Tutankhamun. But one significant portion of the story had not been recorded. The whereabouts of King Tut's tomb. The Valley of the Kings had already yielded the tombs of many other pharaohs. Thus, it seemed a logical place to begin the search for the final resting place of the boy monarch. By 
1921, Egyptian workers had excavated more than a dozen sites in the Valley of the Kings, vainly searching for Tut's tomb. The dream of finding gold, jewels, and other great riches in King Tutankhamun's grave seemed more and more an archaeologist's folly. Their work had been directed by a young, obsessive British civil servant named Howard Carter. His one passion in life was to find the tomb. Aiding him in his effort was Lord Carnarvon, an English nobleman who had originally sought refuge from England's damp weather in the healthful dryness of the Sahara. For five long years, Carnarvon had funded Carter's fruitless efforts to find the elusive burial plot. Despite the find of a new, more promising dig site, Carnarvon decided to return to England threatening to cut off financial support. For another year, hundreds of workers labored over the new site that Carter had found. Then, in November 1922, Carter made an extraordinary breakthrough. He wired Carnarvon, at last, made wonderful discovery in Valley. Together, Carter and Carnarvon descended the steps to the tomb. Both trembled with nervous anticipation. For each man, the passing moments meant that he was closer to fulfilling a dream. But what would they find? Would it indeed be the undisturbed sarcophagus of Tut? The royal seals had remained untouched. But did that mean that the tomb and its contents had stayed just as they were when hidden 3,000 years before? Finally, Carter felt the last bits of mortar give way. He peered inside and was stunned by the sight before him. What do you see? asked Carnarvon. There was a pause. Then Carter softly replied, wonderful things. It took the British and Egyptian governments the next 11 years to carefully remove and painstakingly catalogue all of the objects from inside the tomb. But Lord Carnarvon would not see even half of the treasure. By 1923, he would be stricken under mysterious circumstances. Prior to his return to England, Carnarvon suffered a mosquito bite. Normally, such an occurrence would not cause great alarm, but the bite became infected and he finally succumbed to its effects. Interestingly enough, legend had said that the priests had cursed the Pharaoh's tomb and that those who disturbed it would die. Newspapers around the world announced Carnarvon's death. Then, mysteriously, others began dying. Coincidentally, each person had either been associated with the tomb's opening or the examination of the objects found inside. For a while, the curse seemed very real. But the papers neglected to mention that Carter, who was the first to enter the tomb, and hundreds of others associated with Tut remained robust and alive. Today, there seems little fear of the curse. More than seven million people in six American cities pushed their way into the Tut exhibit, eager to view the objects which had so astounded Carter and Carnarvon, and there were no reports of mysterious deaths attributed to the curse.
The nearly untouched tomb of King Tut that Carter and Carnarvon had unearthed was unmatched in history. It spoke of beauty and elegance in a vanished civilization. The romance of Tutankhamun's curse unfortunately obscured the more significant story of Tut for nearly 50 years. We are just beginning to realize that his death may have contributed to one of the most powerful religious movements in history.